Today we're going to have a look at the uh, Yoshitake GP1000 series pressure reducing valve. This particular model we have here is a half inch uh, screwed BSPT and it's classed as a GP1010. Now the, uh, there's a few differences between this and the GP2000. Uh, uh, I call it the GP2000 little brother. Um, it has some of the uh, same characteristics when operating as a PRV, but it's not quite as versatile as the GP2000, uh, which you can get a lot more um, applications and additions and uh, etc. onto that unit. But this has a place within the, uh, the steam cycle. The GP1000 um, has only one spring, which is in there. You don't need to replace them for different uh, downstream pressures. This one uh, is set to operate between 50 kPa and 900 kPa, but has a maximum operating pressure of uh, 1000 kPa. It's um, handy in that respect that it will do a quite a large uh, pressure range with only the one spring. As you can see, it's compact. Uh, it's not that heavy, although after a while it gets a bit heavy. So here we'll just look at some of the, uh, the features of the GP1000. As I said before, I call it the little brother to the GP2000. Um, some of the uh, similarities and differences I'll try and point out here. Number one, it's pilot operated. So it has a pilot valve um, in its uh, setup to control the amount of steam going to the, uh, to the piston, etc., which I'll talk about a little bit in a minute. Um, it has an internal sense port, whereas the GP2000 doesn't have an internal sense port, it has an external sense port. Um, and by external or internal sense port, I mean, in this case, the sensing port is within the body of the, of the uh, GP1000, it'll be so it's going to be somewhere inside here. You can't see it, but there's a port in, in there which is sensing the downstream pressure. So it has the internal sense port, not an external sense port like the GP2000. The port is on this downstream side. Steam comes in here, basically, uh, on the high pressure side, finds its way up into the um, pilot valve assembly. Um, and then when the spring pressure is applied up here within this little control area here by use, applying uh, a spanner to this um, adjustment nut here. It forces the spring tension down, which we were talking about before, spring that's in there. And that spring pressure then will have enough force to open up the pilot valve. Once the um, steam is, has reached the pilot valve and the pilot valve is open, it then pushes, allows some of that steam to go down on top of the piston because the difference between this valve, the GP1000 and the GP2000, is that it's piston operated, not uh, diaphragm operated. So it has a piston to actuate the main valve assembly. Uh, the GP2000 has a diaphragm, this one doesn't. So the, the steam that comes through the pilot valve uh, applies a force on the top of the piston and then with that um, build up of pressure in there will push the push rod down and open up the main valve which is down in this area here. Uh, there's a little spring underneath here which holds it all closed when there's no spring tension inside this area here. If that, that's released and there's no pressure in there, then this little spring under here holds that valve up into the, that closed position. So as I mentioned with this one, it has an internal sense port. Um, and after the main, uh, sorry, the piston has been actuated and the main valve has been opened up, that allows steam to come in uh, around the bottom of the main valve here and then flow through into the downstream pipework. Now the downstream pipe work, um, obviously on startup has no pressure in it. Um, we've, we've applied a, a, a spring tension on here, so steam is starting to move through. Now as the pressure builds up in this downstream pipe work, it will then uh, put a back pressure 
through this sense port, this internal sense port, and once that pressure is equal to or greater than the spring tension, uh, opposing the spring tension pressure, it will close the, the um, pilot, pilot valve off. Um, and depending on load and demand, it'll just modulate all day long trying to maintain the downstream pressure that you set it at. Um, if we have a quick look at this little sketch I did here earlier, this is what the GP2000 might look like. It would have an external sensor. And people may be familiar with the pipe that runs down from the sense port on the valve and into the pipe where it's downstream. Um, and you set your pressure against a, a pressure gauge. You do exactly the same thing with your uh, piston operated type, uh, but this one has got a little internal sense pipe. So that does uh, reduce a little bit of um, extra pipe work and, and uh, installation time that you might have to do. Having said that, they have their applications and they uh, some, uh, some capacities and some flow rates, uh, some pressures, etc., just exceed the capability of the, uh, the GP1000. In that case, you would use a GP2000. They do have good flow rates, though, uh, as long as you do select them to suit your application properly, and, and uh, you can do that with the sizing charts that are available on, the, uh, on our website, uh, or give us a call and we can help you with that. Um, they do have very uh, stable control, um, the, uh, similar to the GP2000, once they're set under steady load conditions, um, uh, they'll just sit there all day long trying to maintain that downstream pressure. The turndown is the same as the GP2000, 20 to 1 turndown, um, but it has a maximum operating pressure of 1000 kPa, where the uh, GP2000 is 2000 kPa. So you can, you can control from 1000 kPa down to as low as 50 kPa, which is pretty good really. And um, with very little offset, uh, depending on the, <coughs> on the flow rate. So if the flow rate goes from low flow to maximum flow, um, the set point may vary by 20 kPa, something like that, um, just depending on, on, uh, on what your flow rates might be until it balances out and gets itself sorted. They are screwed BSPT 15 to 50, uh, the ones that we have in stock, uh, all sizes are in stock. They are available um, in flange versions, but they're available on request. We're happy to, to get them for you if necessary, but uh, in most cases, if you need a flange one, the GP2000 uh, would be your best choice and easier, and they're all in stock as well. They have ductile iron um, body, which is similar to the, um, to the uh, GP2000. Stainless steel seat and trim, which is the same as the GP2000. Um, but they are slightly lower cost, so there is an advantage in their cost there uh, with the units. But in a nutshell, um, they're very, very uh, robust. Uh, they're small, compact. They've got the one spring, that's the main... Uh, thing that I like about them, you don't have to worry about changing springs for downstream set pressures um, and uh, have uh, very, very good flow rates for their size. Um, with regard to applications, um, pretty much you can use them anywhere, um, but I, I sort of would prefer them, in, from my experience, to put this type of valve on a medium duty process. Um, probably where you need lower pressures because it, is, it does only have a maximum steam inlet pressure of 1,000 kPa. Uh, so if you needed something that was going to operate high pressure, it wouldn't be suitable anyway. Uh, you'd go for the GP2000. Food and beverage, you can use them in there for all sorts of applications. Um, HVAC, uh, air conditioning type installations, especially for humidifiers. You might have three or four humidifiers in a hospital ward and you need to reduce the pressure down to a, a fairly low pressure, usually one or 200 kPa, something like that. You can use them on humidifiers. They can be used in tire manufacturing, um, the timber industry, all your commercial laundries. Uh, in fact, they're perfect for commercial laundries and commercial kitchens um, because of their, their uh, agricultural and, and strength and endurance within the uh, installation of, of most steam systems. 
plating plants, uh, electroplating type plants, um, and on anywhere where you're generating hot water. But if you've got a, a steamed water heat exchanger and you want to reduce the pressure before you uh, send it into that heat exchanger and temperature control it, you can use it for those as well.